is Arhendu Chatterjee, who is the Executive Director of the Development Research Communication Services, Calcutta. Arhendu has got interests in permaculture, agricultural science, geoscience, social science, and we've just been having a discussion whether he's on IDMB as well, uh, from the films that he's made. The presentation that... Are you using PowerPoint? Give it to me. Okay. But the, the title is Need for a Dialogue, Collaborative Action Research with the Resource Poor to Achieve Food and Livelihood Security. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. It's okay if it's working. Yeah. So why he Hello. Ah. Why we change that I stop. I because if there is no PowerPoint, no problem. I only made it this morning, so. <laughs> he, uh, there are some photographs of our activity, otherwise there is not much in that, that is pertinent to it. Sir? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so very good. We see also the, um, I am thankful to you and this I am talking here um, though I am not really either from agricultural or sociological discipline by study. I studied BCom with economics and later on because I was a volunteer among the rural people as a literacy volunteer so I learned farming. I learned farming from the farmer and so all my knowledge is basically with that. Then I studied permaculture from an Australian resource person. Permaculture is an idea which is very central to this uh, idea discussion that happened just now also. Is that uh, India is almost half rented, which is neglected by uh, green revolution, first way, fortunately. And uh, India is basically, uh, there is no chance that this will be irrigated. We are irrigating only about 30-35% uh, of our land and we are already extracting 85% of our groundwater for doing that. So, there is Irrespective of which politician promises, it depends on whether addiction is nearby, there is not enough water, except in their tears maybe. Crocodile tears. So, uh, the, in your discussion from the morning, I was listening and I have changed a little bit. I originally was supposed to talk on something, but about dialogue and poor, but I will stress exactly on the poor again because again almost half of the people in the village area of India are uh, very poor. They have sub acre holding, at least in Bengal. So they have less than one acre or half acre. And so all the questions that we are saying, when we are saying farmer, the many, even a gardener in Australia, I think, has more land than one acre. So here the question is, when we are talking about farming, uh, whether we include the farm laborer, whether we include the herdsman, whether we include the forest dwellers, whether we include the tribals, who have no land but who are uh, living on grazing their cattle and grazing their pigs and chicken. 
this is very important and I feel that we are not paying enough attention to that. The title of the um, conference as I was uh, given to understand is Nutrition Security. Nutrition security is much more than food. Uh, just in the beginning, and this is the precise problem, that in the first phase of our green evolution, we focus too much on production, raising the production of food. And uh, we thought that if there is enough food, there will be enough food for everybody. In reality, we know now, 50 years later, that Yes, our food has increased, production has increased more than 400 times. But our poverty has not decreased more, less than 400 or more than 400. So, actually, there are plenty of food, almost 30-40% of what we produce, which gets rotten and go down on sideways. And there are many people, more than 40%, who are suffering from, who, who simply do not eat two times a day. So, we, just because there is enough food, it does not mean you have enough money to buy it. You need to have a secure livelihood also. And nutrition security assumes that you do not concentrate only on how to produce food, but also how to eat and what to eat and those kind of things. So, utilization becomes much more important. But this was totally ignored or actually destroyed through Green Revolution. Because Green Revolution was not a just a set of technology. It was a different set of technology, inputs and intensive and energy and all that, that we know, I don't have to repeat. But it also had a different sociology. It said, bet on the rich, don't bet on the poor. So bet on the good areas of the country, bet on the good soil, bet on those areas which are poisoned out with water, where water and soil is there. So more, only about 15 to 20 districts in all of India is producing about 80% of the food in many cases. So, when you say rice and wheat and corn, if these are the main crops and you start trying to look at, then you will see that actually it is very clearly focused on certain things. So it is more necessary to think about the sociology that we don't repeat the same mistake. That we look about rain-fed area, that we look about degraded soils, that we look about people who are living in marginal areas and people who themselves are marginalized, who do not have resources, who do not have capital resources, because the Western agriculture, Japan agriculture, where I studied for about a year in a rural development, in a development uh, leadership course, because I was in India, once you study commerce, you cannot study agriculture, even if you wish to. So, the day, for example, if I ask an average person in village area as well as academics that what are the things in which we are rich? We are all the time talking about what we are poor. But we are rich in local knowledge. Our Sundarban has more diversity than one European country maybe of plants and animals. We are rich in sunlight. Japan will be happy. They have hardly 60 days of bright days. We have 300 or more of bright days. We don't consider that as a resource, we consider that as a problem. Uh, we have plenty of people who are ready to work, uh, which we need. What we don't have, we don't have very well distributed rain, Japan has. 80% uh, of our rainfall happens within two to three months, even in the well and out areas, except for one or two areas. So our problem is very different. 
and we have been trying to build on what we don't have. We don't have money, we don't have water, we don't have large equipment, so let us try to introduce them. That is the evolution. So we don't have petroleum, so let us do petroleum. I don't know what kind of intelligence led to us to that decision. I was a school student at that time, but it got into this. Anyway, the third, as we have been discussing about pedagogy, so the question is that uh, it also introduces a different pedagogy, which is top-down approach. This top-down approach, unfortunately, has even till now is remaining. And uh, listening to many friends from Pradhan, it is good that lot of participation is happening. Challenge is going one step more. Uh, not that we have been able to achieve it, but we are trying. And it is an important challenge to SAR friends also. Is that uh, why stop at not teaching? Why not learn from them? Why not let them teach us? Why is it that in one village, what is learned from the villager and the mapping and other things, why that is not considered legitimate knowledge in the society? What is, what is stopping us from networking and accepting that that is maybe much better solution than many of the things that we have been trying so far, expert knowledge. So, do our experts have to be accountable to our farmer or is they, are they beyond criticism? So, in spite of leading many kind of, in spite of making many kind of mistakes, can they simply absorb by saying that, okay, we learn from somewhere else that we do not know. So what I am talking about is that even in, in the, in the well-meaning people, sometimes the whole idea that was being talked about two, three times is the thing that our um, the great evolution and modern development, this question that we that often a new definition is discovered. This tyranny of definition, this idea that somebody was saying that uh, we are captive to terms, new terms. So this this old that. Actual problem is many of the small villagers are not also working in specialized state. For two, three years, by virtue of my knowing Japanese, I, I worked in Naini Agricultural University as an assistant to a Japanese professor, rice expert. Very interesting, most of the professors never entered the rice field and they were in they were asking me, being a Brahmin, how can you enter? You, money. That Darwan was asking me, one of the doorkeeper was asking me that you are from a high caste, how, how come you actually work with a spirit? Very interesting question in this century. Uh, the, the more interesting question came from, this is a Christian university, this is a leading university in extension education. They were asking me that when I work with my students on agronomy plot and I plant some trees, this is not horticultural field, you cannot plant trees here. This is agronomy field. Okay, very good. Then can I go to the horticulture area and plant? No, there you cannot plant rice because it is only for trees. So we have decided that Tree growing is another cultivation, agriculture is another cultivation, animal husband is another, fishery is another stream. So theory is always to make it more specialized, more and more specialized. Farmer, small farmer especially, is doing everything. He is keeping two cows, is also planting some trees, also plant growing some vegetables, is also growing. So, which university, which kind of stream we are talking about? Which kind of, is it agronomy or should we focus on agrology like the French, that which is more the soil rather than the crop? Or should we focus on agroforestry system? So, 
So the challenge again that, so uh, do, should we work, just now the discussion, should we work only on agricultural field which are privately owned or sh should we work on common property resources including forest? It can be wetlands also, it can be grasslands also, it can be roadsides also. So are they not important to food security? They are very important to food security of the very poor. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So, this is the main question and maybe you can get a little bit of glimpse of what we are doing then. So, making a land use map, trying to look at how villagers look at their all their resources, not just farmland, but around their thing, is the first step maybe of trying to define Ah, sorry. So I I will forego this because I think wrong slide has been copied. So it is there, but it is not in the order that is. Uh, there is communication gap. The main point. So it gives me maybe chance to say where which which needs to be alternative focus. One focus need to be on the fact that this kind of what you are seeing there, the marginal lands in very poor area like Makoda, Kodulia, actually land holding is higher and lot of marginal land is there, which is owned by the community, not clearly by, not clear yet where is the government, where it is villagers, where how to do it, but there is possibility. So my as I was saying that focusing on marginal areas, focusing on marginal people is very important to nutritional security of the poor. That in fact nutritional security of the poor cannot be increased by farm productivity increase unless we redefine farm productivity. To grow rice Imagine a rice field which is grown with chemical and which has water control, whatever it is, and good fertilizer. But all that means, okay, maybe 50% or 100% more rice, but it actually means almost 50% or 60% less food. Because in a traditional rice field, not only rice was food, the straw was food for the cow. There were more than 30, 40 kinds of weeds which you could eat. There were more than 10 or 20 aquatic organisms which you could eat. Not the owner of the land, but the actual very poor who is working in the land, they could get food, those food. Those food all get eliminated the moment you start using uh, fertilizer and a, 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 a synthetic pesticide. So, in our ecological agriculture, in permaculture also, the idea is that every field should be a forest and every forest should be a farm. So, can we take that challenge? Can we make every farm in, into a forest? Can we make sure that every farm at least 20-30% at least is either wetland or perennial crop? Even if it is one acre? And can we work with 15, 20, because learning uh, is much better when it is done in group, when it is giving some benefit back and when people see those benefits and when people are happy. So we need to think of farm not as a, only as a place of production but also as a place of learning, as a place of creating culture. Culture is uh, in this in this thing defined as uh, while solving our problem we create many tools and we create knowledge the only thing is that when poor people create those knowledge that knowledge is not being documented enough and disseminated enough and it is not considered legitimate and I will explain with the 
finish with the final thing with the example. It, when you look at V as defined by science, you can see the dichotomy very clearly between the Western knowledge and tropical knowledge. One plant, for example, which is known in India as Kundru, Ivy Gold, the Cochinia grandis. Unfortunately, Cochinia grandis is both the wheat and both the cultivated crop. The wheat grows from the seed, cultivated crop only can grow from cutting. Somehow, our American scientists have found this difficulty to discover that even now. And because they, if they don't discover, we cannot discover, our scientists cannot discover. So, they, can, they have identified it as any website you can check right now. You will see that it is defined as one of the very difficult weeds. And it is actually very rich in vitamin A. It is very good for diabetic patients. And it is very easy to plant. And for 5-6 months we can eat. There are many such plants which are very important for Indian nutrition, which are not being taught. And on the other hand, we, when you take uh, talk of cabbage, when you talk of carrots and vitamin A and vitamin C, very good, yes. But can those seeds be produced in India? No. So is it uh, compatible with the idea of self-sufficiency? Can I grow it and next year again I can grow from the seed? No. And still, all our United Nations organizations and experts are advising people to grow carrots and cabbages to reduce the macronutrient deficiency. That proves the point that our knowledge needs to be changed. Thank you. And we need to learn from the poor. Thank you. collaboration between practitioners, scholars, and the community, research, uh, collaborative action research with the resource poor, sense of ownership with the community, partnership for learning and development. Um, is this collaboration uh, the research on the community or with the community? And if it is with the community, then in this room we have practitioners and scholars there is the community. These words, participatory community and learning and community forestry and social forestry are uh, mostly shams. They are mostly uh, excuses to disseminate what the institution thinks good for people. That is what I was saying, that instead of always trying to create a medium for teaching, if we create a medium for communication, for learning, for both, both for the academicians, the important question is not how quickly people are learning from each other and how good. The main question is, let us reflect on ourselves and write on those papers, two things that I learned in the six months, last six months, from the poor people and working with poor people. Two new food two new ways of using resources, food, fodder, pyro. Try to focus on that. So definitely there should be collaboration. I am saying collaboration means co-laboration. That means it means not only that people in the field will labor and we will work only on, on our papers. This is not collaboration. Okay. I think. Next, Thank you. Next short question is, no, we have a, it's a Okay, I would like to continue if that's okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. I just want to make sure that we can get the next talk. Yeah, and later on I will uh, put the correct.